Hi and welcome to Astronical. In this episode we're going to look at hooking up the ASP32, an incredibly powerful microprocessor, to the Arduino IDE. Let's get started. Is that it? So, ASP32, one of the most powerful microcontrollers you can get uh, at, this, at this point in time. has uh, built-in Wi-Fi, um, around about um, a meg or so of program memory and about half a meg or something ridiculous of um, static RAM. I can't remember exactly the specs, um, probably find out on the internet. Uh, basically, you've got a processor and you've got some... Um, program memory separately on the board. Um, this is the version I bought, which I'm not too happy about, which I'll explain why in a moment, but I've actually ordered a, another development board, another Node MCU development board um, for this. Um, because, basically, if you look, there is no silk screen on the top side. So when you plug it into a breadboard and you're trying to identify which pins what, it's just not there. And Excuse me, that makes it particularly difficult. On the other side, they're there. I mean, extremely tiny, but they're there, showing each pin. But that is fairly useless. So to work with it, I always have to have a picture up on screen at the side, and then I still have to like sort of count down the pins and plug into the right one. It's a bit of a pain. Didn't realise that when I bought this one. So I've ordered another one, which should arrive fairly shortly, um, which has the silk screen going down there. So I would recommend when you're looking at these. Uh, just make sure you've got the silk screen on there. It probably will be a little bit wider than the one I've ordered. I'm not sure you would expect it to be. So I think this is a fairly fixed die size. Um, but yeah, I was working on a project um, uh, for recreating Frogger. Um, and for that, I needed quite a powerful microcontroller with lots of RAM and ROM, uh, good speed. Uh, to get it up to a colour LCD. And initially I chose the ESP8266, like the little brother of this one, uh, which has enough memory, enough RAM, and enough speed to do Frogger. Not a problem. And then, as I was progressing, because I bought the chips and I was writing up the articles for it, in fact I've written the first article, I've done the first video I think on it, I found out there just wasn't enough inputs, enough digital inputs. No matter how hard I tried, because Frogger needs at least, well, probably get away with five digital inputs, you've got left and right, up and down, and maybe a start button. Um, this wasn't enough. When you've used some for the SPI bus and what have you, and I'm at, there's about three left, maybe four, if you had sort of squeezed an analog input uh, in there as well. Just wasn't enough. No matter how I tried to multiplex it and various things like that, wasn't on. So I've plumped for the ESP32, and I've actually wrote... A lot of the Frogger uh, code, which will be coming up in a, in a, in a video uh, soonish, wrote a lot of that code and it works great. And it's got lots and lots of inputs. There are tons of, of inputs, digital inputs, uh, analog inputs, even digital to analog outputs on this. But correspondingly, it's more expensive. It's about twice as expensive as an E8266. So an ESP8266 is around about the price of a good quality cup of coffee, about, uh, about $3 or about... Uh, Two and a half euro or something like that. Uh, Two pounds fifty ish for an ESP8266, but for this, it's right like double that price. Um, but for what it does, it is pretty amazing. The ESP266 ran up to about um, 160 megahertz. This one runs at 240 megahertz. Um, so, and, and instantly when I put the uh, put this in to replace the Frogger uh, chip, there was actually, even though I thought some of the bottlenecks, actually were some of the bottlenecks are communicating with the screen. It did even so improve the speed that it ran at uh, by some amount, um, probably a good 80%, uh, a big improvement. So yeah, if you can afford the luxury of the price or you need the inputs or whatever, like I needed the inputs as well as speed and RAM and ROM, this is the chip to go for. So we're going to look at um, connect it up to the uh, Arduino IDE. And if you come along to, we'll just put onto my computer screen, if you go to extronical.com, and go to basics, systems, and go down to ESP32 and across to using it with the Arduino IDE. 
So there is a couple of uh, hoops to go through to do this, so you can program this unit in C on the Arduino IDE, um, but it's, it's nothing too dramatic. So I'm going to pretty much go through this guide, um, and you do too. That's the actual chip that I've bought, zoomed in picture. So step one, and I must tell you actually I've not installed anything on this particular computer I'm working on. Um, it's a newish computer, it's less than a week I've had this and I've not yet installed anything. So this is a good test and see whether I've written this guide correctly. So first thing is get, you need to get a USB driver for this. Now there are a couple of USB drivers for these development boards. Um, I'm only going to put the one on that I know of and in this guide you'll find it talks about the other one and what you need to do if this particular driver doesn't work. So until you install this driver your Arduino software is not going to see this particular chip. So just to make sure, um, we'll plug in this chip and the computer will probably come up with something on the lines of it can't work out what it is. The Arduino software, which I'll just launch now, probably can't actually work out what it is either. It shouldn't do because I have not installed anything to do with this chip. Okay, so we're in um, that's uh, some old code I was using for my USB meter test. If you've not uh, watched that video, that was a previous one to this. I'll put a link up in the uh, top right corner now. So, we need to see, has it got my board? And uh, no, there's nothing happening. It's not seeing anything going on there. But we'd, when we've installed all the software and drivers, we should actually see the board pop in there. For the first thing, let's install that uh, software driver. So I think Windows was talking about it was trying to install something there. It's not giving me a warning. I can't imagine it's actually gone and found the driver itself correctly. Um, but it might be an idea. I've got a Windows 10 machine now. Uh, it was a Windows 7 machine before and I had to install that driver. Um, we'll just see. Um, I'll go through the process of installing the rest of the software with the boards and we'll just see whether it can actually communicate with this chip. It's just that Windows has not come up with any particular Warnings, no, nope, there's nothing there saying it couldn't work out what that was. So let's just see. So scrolling down the software for the Arduino IDE. So what we need to do is go to this link here, link, link, <laughs> link here, uh, open up that one and download it. Let's go to it. This is from Expressive who made this uh, chipset. Chipset, chip. So clone and download. And download this is it. So while that's downloading, I'll quickly just bring up what the next instructions are. So we've downloaded it. Locate your Arduino folder, it says. If you're not sure, launch your Arduino ID and click file and preference. So we'll pretend that I don't know where my Arduino folder is. So we'll open up that to file, preferences. And it'll tell you here, that's where your Arduino folder is. And I think if you click browse, it'll dump you straight into that folder. But unfortunately, it's actually in a, a file of Windows, isn't it? So we can't do anything like that. But what you can do, if you want, particularly on Windows, you probably do it on other operating systems as well, is just copy that out, Control C, and just open a file window. Click cancel on that. Just open a file window, I don't think I caught it then. And. You will just paste that into there, and there we are. So, going back to the instructions, we've got our location, and uh, so there should be a folder such as a libraries folder. So, again, all I'm doing is following my own guide, just move that across a bit so we can read the instructions at the same time. So, open up libraries, and it says you need to create the following folder. So Hardware Expressive ESP32. So we haven't got a hardware folder, so let's go new folder and call it hardware. And then we're going to go into that one. Because the next thing you need to is do the expressive folder within that one. Oops. So now we're going to create a folder called expressive. So express if. I think it's very important to actually get the names right of this, I think. 
<clears throat> and then within that, another folder called ESP32. So once we've done that, if you look down on the instructions say we're going to open up the zip folder. So, so let's go to my downloads. Get a new file open. New file explorer. And downloads. And what was it called? And there's its order, so open up that. And I think it's going to tell us to just dump that, the contents of that folder. Just have a quick look. So we open up the zip folder. So I'm just reading these instructions here. Open up the zip folder. And we'll get the master folder. Open this up. And you'll see some folders such as cores and tools. Select everything in that one. And copy to your ESP32 folder. So we've got that window. We've got that window. So we're going to open this one up. And I'll just drag it a little bit closer. I'm going to select everything in there and I'm going to drag across that ESP32 folder and copy everything into there. And this is going to take a little bit of time so we'll come back. So that's going to take a little bit of time so we'll come back in a second. Okay that's completed. So let's go back to our instructions. So it says we're not done yet. We're going to download some additional folders. So it's saying in that um, in them files and folders you've just downloaded you should see one saying get.exe. Again this is Windows based guide if you've got Linux. Uh, on Mac OS, there'll be something similar in there. Uh, and if you go to um, that GitHub page, I think it tells you exactly what you need to do if you've got those other operating systems. So it says you go into, so it says you go into the Tools folder. So like that in the Tools folder within the folder you've just done. So we're going to open up the Tools folder and run the get.exe program. So let's just scroll across. There's a few. There's a get dot py for python files and this after one we want to run for windows so we'll double click that we're just having a small drink of lager today so it starts downloading some additional files and again uh, I can't quite remember when I did this a while back how long this takes whether I should continue waffling and again it's, uh, it doesn't have a valid digital signature so do not notify me again and click ok so yeah, the antivirus may complain about this, and yeah, it's, it can be safely ignored. So we'll cut it there, and we'll come back in a second when it's finished. Okay, that's finished. Basically, I did it, extracted that zip file that was downloaded, did a couple of other operations, and then it closed the window. So what do we need to do now? So we've um, run that program, and we should now see some additional folders including one called Extensor ESP32 ELF. So let's have a quick look whether those folders have indeed arrived. So we'll go back. Oh, there we go. It's in this folder, sorry. Extensor ESP32 ELF. Yep, so we've got that. We're good to go. So looking at this, we've got to plug in the development board, launch the Arduino IDE, and select the correct COM port. So we'll actually unplug it. I've got it plugged in, so I'll just unplug it for now. And we'll launch the Arduino IDE, which is already launched, but we'll quit it and launch it again. And we'll plug in our development board. Okay. Leave that about a bit. Might be better that way, actually. No matter what you do with these things, do they? they never want to stay... Might get a breadboard for that maybe, just to hold it in place, one second. Okay, well a little bit overboard on the breadboard, but let's just plug it in, it's just a matter of keeping it actually not moving out of position. There we go. We're not doing any development work on the breadboard today, we're just literally, we get everything working on a flashy little LED here, I think it's a blue one with flash. I quite remember, but we'll leave that like that. Right, so tools, port. See, it's coming up as COM5, so we're going to see if this all works. Uh, and if it does, I've definitely not installed any drives or anything. It's obviously just working Windows 10, but if you've got Windows 7 or for some reason your version of Windows, maybe 10 doesn't pick it up, um, then I'll take you through installing the driver as well. So we'll select COM port 5. And then we need to go to the tools and board and scroll down the list. 
until we find the one that we're working with. So we'll go back to that. So tools. If my software's responding. I know what it's doing. It's having a look whether I've got any libraries it needs updating. Yeah, it just gets delayed every now and again. It does that. So tools. And we need to go to the board. So the boards are not there. So let's just select the COM port and go to tools board and scroll and listen to you see many with the SPT. Right, so we're going to install that driver because I don't think the driver's installed properly. Or it's not the right one that Windows has done. So we're going to Oops, that's not it. And scroll to where the driver is. That was the one. As I said, I think most of these Node MCU boards are probably going to use this driver. If you have any problems with it, read down uh, in the article and it'll tell you what to do uh, to get an alternative driver. So, just scrolling down, download the software. So, Windows 7, 8, 8 1 and 10. You just need this version here. Click on that. And it's downloaded. Open that. And this is a 64-bit system, so it's going to be that one in there, that folder that we need. So, do we have an installer? Here we go, the 64 installer. What I'm going to do, obviously, this is a zip file. I'm just going to extract that zip file first. Here it is, the CP210X Windows drivers. And actually, on my board, if you look very closely, I think it's on the back of the front. Um, I think the it has written on, yeah, if you remember rightly, if you look, I'll bring this up on the big screen. This chip is the USB driver chip, and although you probably can't see the writing on it, I can't see it now. Um, maybe if I put my macro lens on, but I have to stop recording for this particular camera to switch to macro. Um, I actually got a big magnifying glass with a torch shiny right on it. And then I could see the label of 210 something or other. So this is the USB driver chip here. Uh, this is the memory chip, I think, and the processor's under this piece of uh, metal here. So, yeah, I knew whether it was a 210 driver. And you can probably confirm that on whatever board you get. So let's just extract all on there. And a little slurp of lager. Just because I can. And we're going to run the 64 installer there. And I'll click yes. Last time I installed this, it wasn't a Windows 7 machine. So I'm hoping everything goes smooth. It went smooth on the Windows 7 machine. So drives are now installed, and I might just unplug the board for now while the drives are installing. And it says ready to use. Hmm, we shall see. So let's plug in the board. See if Windows does anything with it. It doesn't appear like it's doing an awful lot of things. Let's just quit that software and relaunch the IDE. It's the fact that I've had no sort of like notifications and messages saying, hey, this installed correctly or whatever, that I'm a bit um, thinking it hasn't done. I'll link to those drivers with that board. <clears throat> Do apologise for my voice there. Yeah, I've got a particular um, bad throat just affecting my vocal cords, making it a little bit difficult to speak. We'll see if the board arrives now, see if we've got anything different. On the Windows 7 machine, I'm pretty sure it actually said, yeah, I find this board, I'm doing this, and I'm installing that, and hey, that's everything's fine. But it's the lack of sort of talk back from Windows 10 that's a little bit disturbing, which means it calls for another drink of lager. So, tools. We're certainly not getting anything extra in the boards manager. Comports, correct. So, I don't think it's picking up them boards. So, I'm just going to have a quick look. That's and we've still got yeah, I've got that open still. We'll just check that I've spelled everything right here and just reread my instructions. Just move them over to one side for a second. So he's the software on this Arduino IDE. So yeah, we downloaded it and then we created these folders. 
You should now be in your Arduino main folder with the folders in there, such as libraries. So let's do that. We're in libraries. Yeah. Oh. Ah. I have put it in the wrong place. Okay. That's probably because I've had a lager and a drink, maybe, perhaps. So it says, with soldiers folders such as libraries. That's when I got carried away and went into the libraries folder. So it says, you should never be ordering a main folder. Um, create the following folder within this location, not within the libraries folder. So we'll just quickly control X. That means cut it out, cut that folder, and we'll paste it in there. And yeah, we need to quit the software first. And then try again. Try again. Come on, has it quitted? Come on, there's nothing open. It's opening another program. What program? It's not. Apart from Filer. Oh, what? What? What is going on? Uh, um, I'll close that down. Try again. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cancel on that and I'm going to reopen all the folders. There's no Arduino software folder running. So let's just go in again, documents, Arduino, libraries, and we're going to do a control, cut that out of there, back to here, and I'm going to paste it in there. Oh, what is it doing? If I remember right, I think it was trying to do a sync, so it might be my Google. Um, drive trying to do a sync but I don't actually want it to do a sync at this moment in time so I do have Google Drive installed I suspect yes it says Google Drive is syncing and I bet that is currently holding that folder so I'm just going to stop that syncing for a second that is what the problem is okay we'll come back in a minute when I've solved it okay what I did there I actually had to go into task manager and forcibly quit Google Drive and then all copied across files. So I was right, Google Drive was holding on to that folder. Um, but whatever, the thing won't stop manually from the way I did before. So yeah, I actually just quit the background task and now I've got hardware in the Arduino folder. So let's launch that again. So at least now we've gone through what you need to do with Windows 7 to install that uh, USB driver. Okay, just tidy up a little bit. So now tools, uh, board, and yes, now we have a lot of boards on here. So we're going to look down for something that sounds like what we've got. So we've got a Node 32S, there's one there. Uh, I seem to remember it was fairly obvious when we did this before. I didn't, sometimes you're not sure which one to use. Mine was a Node MCU 32S though, to be more precise. So I'm pretty sure that is what I need to select. Then going back to Extronical. We'll just move it over there a little bit. Ah, has it done that? Let's make it wide again. Let's move it over there. Uh, scroll down, we've got a sample um, blink program. And we'll just copy that out. Oops. So we go in here, select. Let's get over all that selection. Come on. There we go. So when you're copying code off, off the website, it's just go there, click copy, and you can go control C, and then we'll just select, select all that there, delete that, paste that in, double check, we've got the what we want, so tools, board is that, ignore flash frequency, um, irrelevant for now, upload speed, you could set 115, 200, uh, the serial monitor will just open now. That also needs to be matching speed, I think. Anyway, we'll set to 115, 200. And if you look, we should be getting a lower world out and we should be lighting the LED pin. Now, I find when I was uh, researching this, they've, on these boards, various pins are connected to the LED. I think two is the one that works for this particular board. You might find, going to my research, five or nine are, are, are the ones for your board. But try each one of those until you get to flash. Um, so let's try and upload that to the board. Here's my port set, let's ch check that, yep, and we're compiling uploading, and we're uploading, let's expand that up a bit to you, 
And yes, we're writing, so yeah, it's communicating okay. Whether we need that driver or not, I'm not sure. I suspect we didn't. Um, but obviously install it if you're having any sort of problems or you're on the Windows 7, which definitely didn't find it for me. And we can see that it's rotated some information here, as well as the Allure world we're expecting. And we've got a flash in blue LEDs, everything's worked fine. And although this video's probably taken a while to shoot, you can see it was a fairly easy process. Install your driver, download that software, run the Get program, and you're away. And then they've got a very, very powerful chip in your hands there. You can do an awful lot with the speed for its size and the memory that you've got available are phenomenal. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, like, subscribe and share. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.